Kessler, and I will be facilitating tonight's meeting to 9 o'clock tonight. Um, the first thing I would like to do is actually introduce uh, Lisa from the um, Best Practices Ad Hoc Committee, who's going to make a few opening remarks. And then we're going to go into some general discussion about tonight, the, tonight's meeting and get into our first exercise after that. So without any further ado, Lisa. Okay, great. Lisa! All right. Wow. This is a great turnout. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Lisa DiPiano, and I'm with the Ad Hoc Committee on Best Practices. And the committee was formed earlier this year to look at Northampton's decision-making processes and to look at the way that they've been going and what we can do to make it better. And so that's when you, where you all come in. Uh, we've got a seven-member committee on this uh, best practices committee, but we really need your help and support. So I'm really excited to see you all here tonight, and I look forward for this great evening. We're at the very beginning of our process. We're calling it discovery. And so we're looking at, we have issues on the walls here throughout all of the butcher box papers, and we're looking for information from all of you We'll be looking at specifically case studies in this city and also what other towns and cities who face similar issues have done. And after we go through all of that discovery process and report back in with you all, uh, we'll be making recommendations to the city and have those be implemented into the way that decisions are made in the future. So this is a huge process and I'm so excited that you all are here and I look forward to continuing this conversation that has been going on for a really long time. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Any questions for Lisa about the committee itself and its functioning? Okay, well, let's move on. I have a few remarks, too. I want to, first of all, welcome everybody on behalf of the uh, Best Practices Committee, and, and thank you for being here. You certainly could be other places uh, on this beautiful uh, evening um, with family and friends, so we thank you for taking the time to come to help uh, participate in this discussion. We have now less than two hours um, to do our work, and we've, we've really packed this agenda because, as Lisa said, we are in the beginning stages of this process, and at, at the beginning, we want to pull in as much information as possible, hear all your thoughts so that we can sort them in the coming weeks and use the information that we gather tonight in future town forums and in future uh, committee meetings as well. So while we're going to move pretty fast tonight through our exercises, um, I will keep a my ears open to people asking for maybe to slow down or maybe a little bit more discussion on a few key issues. But we have two key exercises tonight that we need to get through in order to gather as much information about issues around best practices and how to improve city practices as well. So try to keep that in mind that we are going to move rather quickly. Um, and as the facilitator, I take two, two priorities in my, or I have two responsibilities that I take seriously, and that is trying to keep us on track, which means um, I hope you don't take offense, but I might ask you to wrap up your uh, comment within the next three to five seconds. Um, and I also might not, if you have your hand up, I might not necessarily pick on you, and here's why. If I see a hand from another person who hasn't spoken for a while, we're going to go to that person first, so that we get as many voices heard in this forum tonight as possible. Um, so those are two of, two of my ways of doing this facilitation. Um, I know you're all here because you care about the issues that we're going to discuss tonight and in future meetings and, and the charge of the committee as I understand it. Um, we are going to, in the course of our discussion tonight, of, of course bring up issues that have actually provoked this meeting, that have provoked the creation of the, of the Best Practices Committee. But what I'd like everybody tonight to keep in mind is in order to do the work and to achieve the goals that we have set forth for tonight is we're not looking at so much who was involved or complaining about what happened, but we're going to try to dig underneath that tonight and understand from a process point of view where we can improve. Uh, so what does that mean? We wanted to take, I've been asked to take a, a minute or so just to make sure we're all on the same page about what best practice means. I'm going to jumpstart that discussion by pulling up a few thoughts that are actually on your agenda um, so that we can at least all start from the same um, place in terms of understanding what we're talking about in terms of best practices. Best practices here um, in, the, in, this, in the governmental context, of course, is that we're going to identify issues, whether they be opportunities before the city, whether they be some challenge that it faces, or whether it be some problem that the citizenry has identified that needs to be resolved. Whatever the issue is, 
we need to, of course, first define it as fully as possible. That's actually probably the biggest challenge we face, is how we define the issue. From that, if, if, if this was sort of diagrammed, you would sort of then move down into what are the parameters of the issue? What, are, what, what helps define that issue? On, the, on your agenda, I just listed one example as legal. There are clearly, on some of the issues that we have before us, legal parameters to what we can do and how we can develop process uh, around it. So we have to keep those in mind, and over the course of time, we actually have to do research around that to make sure that we understand all of the parameters and limitations of, of the issue. Next, we have to look at the decision-making process, and I think this is a key point that has been, at least in the limited time that I've been involved in this process and understand some of the issues, where we're going to focus, if not tonight, in the larger process of developing the report for the City Council. How is decision-making made? What type of decision-making process is used? We have everything, of course, from um, majority rules to consensus-making, which I understand the um, Best Practices Committee has adopted as their decision-making model. Am I correct on that? That is correct, consensus, which is considered the highest form of decision making since it means everyone ultimately agrees to the, uh, to, the, to the decision that's being made. Then there's the issue of communication processes. How do we actually communicate the decisions that have been made? Well, here's another example because I think uh, um, we feel a little shy, a little embarrassed, if you will, that we, we could have done better on actually advertising this meeting tonight. We really didn't get information out there as early as possible. I see some heads nodding. The, the, the article this morning should have probably been out if we could have gotten it in the paper last week. So it's not just post-decision making communication, but what's key to what we're looking at in terms of best practices is how do we communicate what's coming up? How do we communicate how the citizenry of the city can actually engage themselves in some of the city processes? So that's also what we're talking about when we look at uh, best practices. Just a few more things that are on your sheet there, as I said, so you can take them with you. Within this establishment of practices, obviously there are people that are going to have certain roles and responsibilities, and how do we hold those people accountable to doing what they've been tasked to do, or what's even perhaps part of their job description? How do we keep the, the entire process accountable to the public? Um, of course, evaluation. An ongoing evaluation process is important to continuing um, to make sure that our practices are the best ones we can put in place. That'll be a discussion that we need to have once we refine some of the issues and some of the topics that we need to discuss um, and work on further down in our process over the next few months. And finally, equally important is once we've done that evaluation and realized and identified some of the weaknesses um, in how we're doing our work or um, who actually is engaged or not engaged and should be engaged in the process, then we have to sort of rewrite our regulations and our procedures so that we accommodate what we've learned in the process. So we're talking about all those factors when we talk about best practices and, and looking at how to improve the practices um, of the city government and its, and its various committees and its various sub-entities. So I'm going to stop there. I know it's a very fast overview, but I will take a questions or two, or we can engage in a little bit of a discussion. Does anybody want to comment on any of these topics? Does anyone want to add something to this list? Silence is golden. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Then. Thank you. Thank you for that. Just so you, again, have it on your agenda. So I think it's a good thing to refer back to as we do both our full team exercise and our small group exercises. Um, I wanted to actually go to what most of you who have been in facilitated meetings know are our ground rules. I only have a few. Um, very simple. One of the things, one of my other responsibilities as facilitator is to keep us on, keep us focused and on track. So most of you have heard of the idea of using a parking lot. If someone brings up a very good idea of an idea that we want to like look at but not right now since it's not germane to the topic, we're going to write it up here under the parking lot and we'll get back to that as you see at the end of the agenda either to decide how to deal with it at the next meeting or task, task somebody to develop it further and disseminate it to the members. The ditto rule. Does anybody know what the ditto rule is? Yes? Somebody repeats what someone else has said. If you're waiting to speak and the person before you just said something very close to what you want to say, and I point to you, you can just say ditto to that last comment so that we can move on quickly because we have a very limited amount of time tonight. I've put the timeout uh, rule up here um, only because of, frankly, what I've heard in setting this meeting up. And let me explain what I've heard and, um, and how that gets qualified by who I am. 
if we, if, if for some reason tension develops in this room around a certain issue and we actually start getting on complaining about something or someone, I'm going to call a timeout. There's food back there. We can all go out and take a nice deep breath right outside and we'll come back in. I really hope we don't have to use that rule, but that will be invoked if we need to, just to keep us focused and, and out of the unnecessary area of heightened emotions um, and negativity. The reason I say I'm putting that in there is I've actually been away um, out of the country for two years and have just come back in and have just, due to colleagues and friends that I know are involved in this, have, have offered to, to facilitate tonight. So the fact of the matter is, by and large, I don't know anybody in this room. <laughs> so you're pretty much all on, with the exception of about six people, on equal grounds in terms of what I know about you. So um, I'm just putting that, that rule in there in case I need to invoke it. You probably all know what an I statement is. We really want to speak to what we think is best or what we want to see done um, with regard to the issues that we're addressing. This is not, really, I'll really try to stop you before you say, I think you or I think so-and-so wants this. You can only really tonight, it's only good form to speak for yourself tonight in this, in this forum in light of the issues that we're looking at. I've talked about the, my priorities and responsibilities and I want to ask the group if they feel like we need any other ground rules to start our meeting off with and to guide our meeting. I'm going to take that to like cover the essential ones and we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. Um, I was asked to... Um, we would do introductions. So, oh, yeah, we're going to get the introductions. And, and while quickly. you're looking at, you know, there are more people coming in. I just want to make sure that if people rearrange chairs, everybody stays in the view so that everybody can see and we can see everybody. If, if you end up in a back row or whatever, you'll get a There's a chair right here. Yeah, Lisa won't you. <laughs> One more thing you've probably noticed, although it is almost due to the advances in technology invisible to us, but the, the meeting is being, is it photographs or video? Video. It's video. Um, so we are being videotaped tonight um, because it is a public meeting, and in fact we have a member of the media here who will re be audio taping portions of the meeting as well. Any questions before we go any further? All right, what we're going to do now is, um, I've yeah, introduced make myself. Yes. Yeah. Make a suggestion. If people, late people come in through that door, maybe people should pull chairs up so they can go around the back. It's kind of embarrassing to walk in front of the whole group of them. Oh, pull your chairs up just a little bit yeah, this way yeah. so that there's we'll a little aisle. If anybody else comes in. Okay. So what we'd like to do next is actually take a few minutes to go around and have you introduce yourself. What we'd like to hear very loudly in light of the size of the room is your name and any other piece of information that you'd like to share with the group, either while you're here or something about your family or whatever you'd like to share tonight about yourself. Um, only one extra sentence, please, so that we can get through this nice large crowd tonight. So if you don't mind, I think we will start with uh, Councillor Bardsley over there. <laughs> Put him on the spot. Well, that was it. <laughs> Michael Bardsley, City Councilor or Ally and a uh, member of the Best Practices Committee. Uh, Jerry Butker, and I'm president of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. Christina Cicino, I live with one of the members of the Best Practices Committee. <laughs> 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 you can all guess who that is. <laughs> Welcome, Marguerite.
Joe Mesterka. I'm interested in how decision, decisions are being made in the city of New Hampshire. I'm Wendy Foxman. I'm a member of the Best Practices Committee and am here in Ward 7. Hi, I'm Jennifer DeGiro. Jim Nash with the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. I'm Peter Vickery from ours. I'm here because Alex invited me and because how self-government works in North Hampton affects how self-government works in ours. I'm Alex Giesler. I'm a member of the Best Practices Committee and a longtime member of the Bay State Village Association. I'm Joan Bratterman. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I teach in Hampshire and I'm working on a film about the women's art movement. And I live with this person. Mm -hmm. I'm Bob Breckman. I'm the City Council from Ward 3 and a member of the Best Practices Committee. I'm David Narkowitz. I'm the City Council from Ward 4 and also a member of the Best Practices Committee. I'm Mary Ann Berlin. I'm just a citizen, but I want to know what's going on. <laughs> okay. I'm Dave Rackow and I'm on the Board of Public Works. I'm Diane Welter, and I welcome the opportunity to be part of this process. Well, my name is Susan Enzies, and sometimes I feel very, very uh, marginalized, and I think I'd like to participate a lot more fully in this sort of thing. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I'm William Mayer. Welcome. Marisha Thomas, North Hampton resident. Lisa DiPiano, member of the committee, and I think participation is a really beautiful thing. Participation. <laughs> yeah. I'm Joan Sanadella, and I'm a citizen of Northampton who's interested in best practices. Mm -hmm. I'm Fran Bolt <coughs> Boltman, and I've been interested in this for a while, too. Uh, I'm John Sinton from Florence, and me, too. <laughs> you know. Stan Pollock from Florence, and citizen of the planet Earth. <laughs> Kelsey Flynn, member of aforementioned media and uh, now <laughs> resident of Ward 3. And Sue Norton, member of the Bay State Village Association, interested in sustainability and water, parkland along the river. Okay. <coughs> I'm Adam Cohen. I'm a member of the North Street Neighborhood Association. Uh, videotape of tonight's meeting will be up on northasoc.org probably in a couple days. And uh, our association is very concerned about how sustainable Northampton will affect Ward 3, and we're hoping that public input will be incorporated into that process. And will the entire meeting be videotaped? Not the small group part, but this, these big general sessions. Great. Thank you. Jim Dostel, president of the city council and uh, councilor at large, and really interested in the outcome of this process. Great. Thank you. Sonia Larson, resident of Leeds, and also just very interested in the messy process of community participation and sometimes the inspired art of it. <laughs> Thank you. Jen Werner, Ward 4 Schools. Karen Brown, Ward 4. I also have kids in the school system. Kathy Sola, I'm a member of the Bay State Village Association. Ani Rowe is a member of the working group that helped put on the forum. Um, I live in Ward 4. I'm Mary Casper. I live in Florence. Uh, and I'm very involved in the best practices. Thanks to our guests. Jeff Davis, I'm on the North Country Tree Committee, uh, the Civic Association, and I'm also um, uh, interested in best practices. Betsy Sears, my North Hampton Housing Partnership, and I'm also interested in my name is Neil Bastek. I'm the web director at Free Press, a national nonprofit for uh, media reform and a uh, new resident of Florence. Welcome. Would you consider introducing yourselves and saying a sentence or two about who we are and why we're here? Um, John Black, president of the Green Tree Neighborhood, and I'm here, I guess, just interested in what the best practices mm -hmm. are all about. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, I'm Ken Mitchell. I live on uh, West Street. And I also have been trying to make North Hampton a better place for about 20 years. I'm Michael DeKira, I'm a feeder on the other side of the river person at the Chiefs Bay. I'm just interested in your, uh, the issue we want to chat what the discussion was. Maybe we should color the name bad. <laughs> 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 and, 
Sorry? Outside. Okay, so, yes, would your character uh, introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Rachel Rybacek. I live in the Green West Street neighborhood and um, worked for years to organize the Save Our Affordable Housing and Smith destruction to the ambivalence of the city council and many residents in Northampton. So I'm definitely interested in um, improving the decision making on behalf of residents in Northampton. Well, again, First of all, thank you all and welcome. It's it's really quite a diverse group we have here tonight, so I look forward to the uh, creativity and the outcomes um, of tonight's exercises. I wanted to just do one more thing, since we're actually three minutes ahead of schedule, which is just absolutely astonishing. <laughs> so um, I wanted to actually open the floor to any of the members of the committee or people who have been involved in the committee to comment on its history, um, where it's going, because they can probably do a much better job than, than has, I've done already about it. Or, so feel free, any members of the Committee of Best Practices, to comment, share any thoughts about the future or the process, the fact that I believe the uh, final report is due to City Council in March of 2009, is that correct? Or yes. sooner, or sooner, of course, but I guess that's... Anybody else want to make a comment or two? Okay. Well then, actually, let's move on to the first exciting exercise we have. If you, you can tell by just the way they've been titled, um, one of them, the first exercise we're going to uh, work on for a, a few minutes is going to involve everybody at one time. We're going to pull all the chairs into the center. Mm -hmm. We're all going to grab some kind of writing instrument, or several. We have a whole bunch of them up front here. And the idea of what this exercise is to do is to get as much information out um, as we can about what you think are issues uh, around and about best practices. I'm trying to leave this very broad. What, what it is, is it's really, it's like a brainstorming session in a group process. What we've done just to sort of jumpstart the process so that we can keep the time down a little bit is um, some members of the, of the ad hoc committee just put some ideas up here. You might want to respond to them. The, the traditional way of doing this, but I'm just going to, you don't have to follow this, is if you have a response to one of those issues up there, like it says over here, well, something that everybody can see, the Meadows Plan. I frankly don't know what that means, but if that triggers an idea or a comment or a criticism that doesn't point to an individual person or something, you basically go up there and um, you draw a line off of it. And you write whatever you have to write, and usually you just circle it. And then within the time that we're going to allow for this, you're going to see there's going to be this whole map that develops. Um, sometimes. We might have to, because they're on both sides, you might have to repeat uh, an idea from over there so that you can link it to an idea that has emerged on this side. It's usually all down one wall, but th this works just as well. So the idea is to get up there and just keep walking around the room, and as you see ideas, just write something down. We're going to keep all these. These are all going to be transcribed in the end. But the other important thing about this exercise is it's going to feed into the small group process because you're going to be able to see what your other participants are thinking and help move the conversation in a positive and, and, and uh, way during that, again, that small period of time we have tonight. One or two rules about how this should be done and how I encourage you very strongly to do this. This might be a challenge to some of you, particularly our politicians, but um, you can't get no talking during this process because talking will, it, will, it, it, it um, affects what the person next to you is thinking and wants to put up there. And it might actually make that person afraid to put a comment up there based on who you might be standing next to that person. This is really trying to free up and be as non-judgmental as possible in this process. We should all as citizens of this city who want to contribute to improving best practices be able to put whatever we want up there that is positive and forward thinking. Again, no criticism of individuals um, um, in any sort of unhealthy or unproductive way. Can we agree to try to, I know it's very challenging. Every time we do this, it's very challenging to keep people quiet because they see something and they want to comment on what they've seen up there. But for the next 20 minutes, we're going to do it for 20 minutes, then we're going to check in and see where we're at if we need any more time. Um, if we can just take a bunch of pens, either that you have or that we have up here, and we'll pull the chairs in, and we'll just, there's food back there. You can take a break and have some apple cider or some cookies. I'll get to the, I'll get to the hands, I'll get to the hands. And then we'll reconvene. We'll have a little chat about what we see up here and maybe answer any concerns that might emerge out of what's up there. And then we'll break into our small groups. And I see a few hands that we'll address right now. Jesus. 
Well, what if the topic's not up there that we'd like up there? Oh, you put whatever you want up there. These are just, the ones that have been put up so far are just to get the process started because we know that they are issues that people probably want to respond to in some way, okay? As long as it has concerns Northampton and as long as it's sort of focused on improving the way processes around city government are happening or need to be improved, that's what should go up there. Michael. Ditto. Ditto. Thank you. <laughs> Bonnie. Um, and so if I think it's, an, it's just an improvement to say city council meetings make me hungry, I should, I should write that down. That's absolutely right. Okay. So you'd be surprised what might come off of that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Any concerns about the process that we're going to go through for the next 20 minutes? Okay, I have 7.33, so we'll do a check-in in 20 minutes and see if we need the extra 10 minutes after that to keep going. So, again, there's food back there. If you haven't put a name back, John, they're out on the registration table. We encourage you to do that. Let's pull the chairs into the middle, pick up a pen or two. Again, there's a whole bunch up here. Uh, what you see up on the boards, anything that strikes you in particular that you'd like to comment on? Yes. Kathy. It's amazing. Uh, this is just within a four-year period, all this stuff. Four-year period. Does that I think the Smith College overlay started all of this, and that was only four years ago, four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So all this has occurred in a rather quickly, quick rate. The issues, okay. Jesus? Um, the most common theme seems to be that there are mumbling of support there to that comment. Yes, Sonia. I just want to applaud the process. I felt like we not only got the chance to speak, but what? noticing that after we spoke that there was a lot of listening by reading, and I'm not sure we would have accomplished mm -hmm. that in actually yeah. speaking. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's a model to think about. Yes. So would there be a way to add to these comments? There would be a way? Um, well, we'll certainly probably do uh, um, a refined process in the next one. I mean, are you talking about tonight? They'll be up on the wall for the rest of the time. If you want to go up and add things so that we get those back into when we, when we transcribe them, that's, they'll be up there for the rest of the evening, so feel free to go up during the meeting. Yes, Jesus again. I don't know if maybe she had meant like an ongoing dialogue on some of these things outside of the meeting. Oh, well, that's to be discussed. The, the process of the process committee has to be discussed, <laughs> yes. Any other sort of general comments of what you see on the, Bonnie? I did notice that the people who came here with sustainability as uh, an issue seem to have a, uh, a really consistent voice throughout all of the issues. So it just struck me that my town is really concerned about sustainability. It also struck me that people define that in a lot of different ways. Mm. It's therefore a really tough issue. Mm. I don't see your name. My name's Deb. Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to comment on the um, uh, comment about uh, public meetings. One of the challenges that I find with someone who is on a committee is because of the open meeting law and you can't discuss with your colleagues the issues, um, it does cut into uh, discussion time with the public. And it's really, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a real challenge to figure out how to balance mm -hmm. um, those things, and I think committees that have staff and have deadlines um, sometimes end up having to rely more on staff than they might otherwise, which um, I think sometimes gives a lot of us the sense that staff is making more determinations than, than the public are. And I think those are conflicts. I mean, I think those are things that you have to mm -hmm. try and figure out how to balance. And that's, that's exactly the type of topic to bring up in our small group so we can explore these steps in that, yes. Is it Eric? Something, it's John. John, I'm Something sorry. just occurred to me in listening to that talk is that the open meeting laws, I guess the intention is that there's going to be some sort of uh, behind the scenes discussion. I know there's a lot of criticism all over this board for each of these individual topics um, about decisions being made behind the scenes. Um, so if there was some way to instill with the public that there could be this discussion that happens not in the public eye, but that is documented for public review so that the public could, you know, read. Hold that the thought and bring that to your small group so that we can get that documented into, okay. the, into the process discussion. Any other general comments about what we see up here? 
Okay, the next step is to break into small groups, and Bonnie was to do the calculate. How many are we going to do? Six small groups. We're going to do six small groups, and what we're basically going to do is, it's your choice, but we're going to just have them set around this room and maybe one or two out in the hall just so that the noise level doesn't get too loud. Each, each small group will have, why don't I turn this over to you, since this is yours. Who, they'll each have a facilitator? They'll each have a facilitator. I'm going to make it up just as you would have. Um, <laughs> because we didn't know how many people we, we were going to have. We knew that we were going to have to do some fast, uh, fancy footwork. Um, but it seems that it would be best if we had six small groups of approximately seven participants and one facilitator. We were going to try to have a recorder for each small group, but we didn't get those. And so um, I'm going to ask that the facilitator to facilitate also record ideas, and I'm going to come around and talk to you about that. Um, if you really feel like it's more than you want to do, then a couple people have volunteered to record. I can send those people over to you. But to get the small groups going, we're going to ask <coughs> that you just pull your chairs over. Like this group down here may want to pull their chairs out in the hall and grab a flip chart. And if you don't have a pad of paper on your flip chart, I'll bring you one. Um, you know, this group can pull into this corner. Just, you know, you can work it out on your own. Seven, approximately seven people, one facilitator will come and find you. If you are a city councilor, or city planner, or some other city official, we don't want to have four of you in one group and three citizens. Try to disperse yourselves uh, neatly and tidily throughout the large group so that your voices don't uh, sort of drown out everybody else's voices. And what am I missing? The purpose of the groups. Oh, <laughs> we're not going to tell you. That's a mystery. <laughs> Actually, did you want me to go on? Why don't you go on? Yeah. Okay. Um, the facilitators can explain this to you also, but the purpose of the small group is to answer the question, basically, what could Northampton be doing differently? Now that you've gotten your thoughts going by doing this exercise, the purpose of the small group is to document in very action-oriented ways your ideas about what the, the city of Northampton could be doing differently. Um, and it'll, it'll go, you'll have about 30 minutes to discuss, so the facilitator's gonna really need to keep your um, discussion going at a very good clip. But there should be plenty of time for every single person in your small group to give at least one idea. If you don't want to talk and you just want to listen, you're allowed. But you've got time to talk. This is the time for everybody to get their ideas in the public record. Again, at the top of, just to add to what Bonnie's saying, at the top of your agenda are two questions we, the committee would like you to answer. But in doing that, again, I encourage you to go back to what's also on your agenda that we discussed, or at least presented up here, the, 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 the elements of best practices. And think about those as you reflect on some of the comments and, and pull out from some of the, either the, the praise that's up here or as some people pointed out, the criticism that's up here. Behind that are the solutions. If, if the criticism is that something is not is too secretive, well, well, what is the process that we need around that? Or how do we engage more people earlier in the process to help actually define the issue before it goes before a, you know, a legal process or whatever some of the challenges are? So that's why you might want to, as you're breaking into your groups, do one more round think about what you've seen up here, and then focus, um, again, on some of the elements of process, of be uh, excuse me, of best practice, as you have your discussion. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. Again, this is, as we said at the beginning, as, it, as Bonnie called it, or I'm sorry, somebody called it a discovery, Kim, uh, Lisa called it a discovery process. We're just, we're information gathering at this point. You'll see at the next forum, we'll have a very different process by which we sort of do a different, decision making or, or creative <laughs> process around the information that we're going to be bringing to that meeting. So again, it's a very broad sort of, we're, we're really reaching out to bring as much information about what the challenges are um, and how we go about creating better practices for the city's uh, government and its various functions. So don't, again, as free as you were here, be free, but we're going to, your facilities are going to focus you, like they, they might start on a topic and they're going to try to stay focused on a topic for a few minutes before they move off to the next one. So try to try to f structure it that way, if you will. Any other questions about what we're doing for the next 25 to 30 minutes? Yes. Each small group will have the same selection of topics to talk about. Um, again, yes, you can use these. If something again is, is said in the meet in the small group that triggers a new idea, you're absolutely free to bring that, bring that up. Your facilitator might put that to the side for a minute or two, but. Um, yes, it's again, it's, they're, they're, 
there's no limitation as long as it's focused on how we're discussing and moving forward in the idea of improving best practices for the city of Northampton. Can I add to that? No. Anything? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to be the facilitator. Um, I'm, uh, by the way, very excited. We've got such a neutral and capable facilitator. Um, I was going to say that every small group will have its own parking lot. So you can come up with any ideas about what Northampton could be doing differently. But if something occurs to you that is important and you want it in the public record and it really is outside the context of this forum, then it will get written down on your small group's parking lot. That will get passed along, transcribed and passed along to the Best Practices Committee also. So all ideas are good ideas. So I'm still confused. Are we, as a small group, dealing with specific issues or we're dealing with just what we think of as best practices? Yes, best practices. But again, using obviously using case studies yep. to get behind some of the some of the, some of the elements of best practice. Yes, ma'am. Is there any other framing anything for the small committees? Because if we just get together and uh, yeah, complain, that's not. That's why you're going to have facilitators. You won't be allowed to. Well, it, yeah. Well, complaining's fine as long as the complaint leads you to an idea that might bring a solution to. A, a flaw or a missing component to a process. I mean, if we're talking about, um, again, I don't know these issues well, so I can't really bring up too many examples, but if I just look at the city council meetings and see here that people are saying that they're too stuffy or that the city council meetings are structured such that it feels that our citizens' voices aren't heard, okay, obviously that's a complaint. But, but that also, there, there's a, obviously a problem there of communication and perhaps structure in the meeting. Now, again, going back to this, there might be that we don't know tonight parameters that limit some of that. And that we don't necessarily need to hear that from the city councilors tonight, but we will be do, the committee will have to do that research to find out what limitations you know, are, are required, if you will. Um, but how much in advance can city council agendas be released? I don't know if that's even done or not. Or, but but take, the, take the criticism and, and find what the solutions to that criticism are. That's what we're here to start tonight, in a very broad way. You're going to be asked to give all of your ideas, summarize your ideas into one sentence that begins with a verb, so it's an actionable idea. Alex. We're going to count off to, to separate the groups. OK, that's a, we can, let, let's hold that thought, and we'll get back to that. We, were, we didn't make it our minds up on to do that. Yes. Uh, I don't know, for those of you who have quizzical looks on your faces, or, not, or inside their head. Um, the prompt question that, I'm, I'm gonna be one of the facilitators, the prompt question that we're gonna use for the group is how would you change Northampton's decision-making processes? Do you feel that's helpful, uh, quizzical-looking people? Yeah. Okay, that helps frame it. I'm, Sonia. Well, I'm curious because that's already framed in the negative, so I'm wondering if we can amend it to say what would we like to affirm as well? I mean, we're, there is a bias coming into this meeting, so it's already assuming, like, changing it. I thank you for that. I actually had that in my opening remarks, that we also need to acknowledge what's being done right, because we can also learn from that and, and transfer that into other areas that those, those practices might uh, be beneficial to another area, and I applaud you, Sonia, for saying that. It's not just about the criticism. There are things being done right, and we need to get those into our document and, and, and get those um, recognized as well. I think um, from, I mean, I understand sort of the, 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 the quizzical look, as it was said, because again, we're at that beginning stage where we're trying to pull this into some order. Um, I just encourage you to take what you've brought tonight, if they're criticisms or if they're ideas about better practices, and lay them into the discussion that you're gonna have for the next 25 to 30 minutes. Um, we will actually be organizing that into some coherent document that will be used, as I said, in, at future meetings and for the committee to, the best practices committee to review and, and work from in terms of their own strategies. So if we, so the question is, do we want to just sort of organically break into groups or shall, should we count off to make sure that spouses that are sitting in, significant others that are sitting next to each other get into different groups? <laughs> okay, facilitators for Rodney. We're going to count off by six. Starting right over here. One. Two, three. Yes. Then you should pull up the facilitators so they don't count off. Facilitators yeah, move, and city councilors move, and any other city officials.
don't get to stay out of the cabin. Um, uh, just a quick housekeeping housekeeping task. There's several people who came in late. If you would like to capture your name and your email address, if you'd like to give it to us. So, um, We're not, we're not in the few minutes we have remaining going to go through every point that was up here. What we would like to do, as it's as stated in your um, agenda, is if you would like to, uh, quickly voluntary, um, comment on something, a theme or a particularly important issue to you that came up in your discussion, pointed out um, on whichever flip chart it is, so we can have just a brief dialogue on it, and then we'll go through each group very quickly. Again, these will all be wrapped into one uh, written document, but um, we don't have the time, obviously, to go through every one and discuss and debate, but we would like each group, any member in each group who wants to comment um, on what they've discovered or discussed, um, feel free at this time to now. So group one, which is your flip chart? Group one, this one. Any comments from group one members? Yeah. Dan. Hi, I raised the uh, point that, um, that I also wrote over next to budget, um, that with cities all around the country facing shortfalls of uh, uh, budget, um, it's a trickle-down effect from the federal government. Uh, we're spending trillions of dollars on an illegal, unjustified war. If citizens got together and the city got together and said, we are no longer interested in funding this war, and that the amount of money that our taxes go to the military for this war, we're holding back and putting into the city we live in. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Sue? I actually wrote next to that, how do we actually do that? I'm sorry? I wrote next to that, how do we actually do that? And I responded <laughs> saying that the city could make a proposal um, that, um, that Northampton as a city uh, is not interested in continuing the funding for this war. So, okay. like, putting yeah. it forth as a resolution or something? We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll explore that. Uh, a little further. I have something that came up that was, I thought, pretty amazing. Is the one? city of Northampton has created a, a citizen, what was it called, Mary? Well, no, it, in the past, right. and still on the books, is something called the Citizen Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. which is a um, another structure for dealing with certain city issues, and mm. it would be an interesting thing to look at that committee, why it, it wasn't in effect for a long time, and then it sort of stopped being used, and it's another model that we could use for some and it, and it came out of some kind of uh, disagreement with the decisions that had been made, so they created the Citizens Committee to help with decisions. Well, the point is, is in the archive somewhere, there's documentation. It's still there. It's still there. We, should get, that that we should get that information out. Yes. We should get that out. Any other comments from Team 1? Team 2, which, which flip chart is yours? Uh, the one with the orange. Any particular? <laughs> <laughs> the message the was. is inversely related to the quality of the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Team two, any comments on what you discussed? Anything of particular importance? Yes, sir. I think we were talking about the disadvantages of having too much power concentrated uh, in the mayor's office and administration. And David was very good to uh, tell us that uh, in order for things like the mayor to no longer chair city council since you know the city council is supposed to be a check and balance on the mayor's you know the decisions of the mayor that we would need a charter change mm -hmm. so that was something also mayoral appointments you know we feel like you know the city council should be more involved but the public should also be involved in um, in having something to say over appointments and perhaps we should elect some people rather than appoint them okay, okay thank you any other comments Team two, team three, which one is yours? Team three. We're right in the middle. Right in the middle. Fran, anything or any other members? Any? Well, I'll say something. Um, one of the ideas that really sort of emerged from the group was that 
we really need to recognize and use different types of meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, what happens all the time is they say, well, we had a public hearing. You know? mm -hmm. And early in the process, we might do some brainstorming to define the problem. Uh, as the process goes along, it can be more, become more streamlined, and the public hearing probably is the last thing to do. And so that was one idea that I thought was good. Great, thank you. Michael. Yeah, an idea I'd like to emphasize is that um, early on, we really need to define what the problem is that we're, we think we're addressing with whatever we're proposing. And sometimes that is not very clear. Right. Back to and finding it, the issue. Right. And there should be a way of brainstorming early Well, Are there other ways to address this problem other than the, the idea we proposed? And another idea that came out didn't come from me, it came from somebody in the group, is we need to re-examine the role of the city councilors and the levels of support, very similar to what Ken, uh, Ken just said, um, examining that. Okay, thank you. There was over here, yes. Yeah, and I, there are several of us who've talked about the importance of getting the public involved earlier in the yeah. process that we're used to doing, and really, really going out of our way to make an effort. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else from team three? Team four, which one's yours? This one over this here? This one on the end. Any comments from team four members? Good, the bad, the ugly? <laughs> Anything to say? Uh, I think uh, there, there are, uh, we, we wanted to emphasize that there are a couple of uh, areas that, that w where we did very well, uh, such as the adoption of the Community Preservation Act, which was open, heavily contested, um, a, a very good process, and both sides uh, accepted uh, both the victory and defeat, and then followed up by the CPC and their open process. So we do have uh, a couple of very good examples. Again, um, we emphasize uh, involving the public early, early, early. How, did you say early? Early. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice to hear a positive one there. Uh, we had a positive one as well with the Meadows, the Meadows Plan uh -huh. um, and talked about why it was successful. And one of the reasons it seemed to be successful was that there was, there was care and consideration taken to speak to each particular constituent group in the Meadows. The farmers, they were meeting with the farmers groups. They were mm -hmm. meeting with butters. There, you know, mm -hmm. And care was taken to make sure that everybody had it, an opportunity to be <coughs> a good possible model for other team five, which would be this one here. Five and six were combined. That's right. Five and six were mm -hmm. combined. So, any comments from team five and six? Yes. I, I have a comment. Um, I think all of ours were really good, positive, you know, verb things. And you want to see them all but, in tomorrow. Yes, but the really interesting thing was to cultivate mutual respect between. Mm -hmm. City government and the citizens, and yeah. I think that kind of goes on the top of the list of everything. That didn't come from me. <laughs> I'm just reporting it. Okay. Any other comments from Team Five Six? Yeah. Yes. Um, which, interestingly enough, a theme that emerged that I think would create some of that is um, giving citizens, residents, the um, sort of um, the information to be transparent in so many ways around budgets, decision making, to not only have a public comment period where residents speak to a body that's not responding, but to have an explanation behind these are the decisions we're making, the votes that are being taken, to sort of respect the intelligence and integrity of residents to be sort of kept abreast of what's going on in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Any other? Yes, sir. Um, sure. We sort of ditto what a lot of other people have said here that uh, there's the formal meeting process with the formal public hearings shouldn't be the first thing that happens. It should be there should be meetings before to explain to the public what the issue is and what the problem is you're trying to solve. Same thing everybody else said. It seems to be a recurring theme through all these groups, and I would hope best practices would look at that seriously. Great. Any sort of uh, closing comments in terms of what some of the small group work has uh, brought forth? Yes, Bonnie. Uh, I, I would love to just say, as a non-group member, but a floater, I was 
not at all surprised, but I was extremely impressed with the quality of ideas. And I mean, we threw you into chaos. We said, fine group, fine right. facilitators. Right. And then 30 minutes later, you had incredible ideas. And not just that, but models for uh, ways of implementing things going forward. I just thought it was wonderful. Thanks, Bonnie. We have two parking lot issues that we'll look to the team to put, actually more than two. Okay, let's start here. Uh, best practices is about the relationship between the city government and the citizens. Mm -hmm. And why was that put as a parking lot issue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like what we're talking about. Well, I, just, I felt like there was the, this overarching kind of philosophical thing that people wanted to get across, and I was writing <coughs> stuff down, and it wasn't, uh, it didn't seem concrete. It didn't seem like a verb statement. Like, cultivate mutual respect is very, is, very difficult. Yeah. So I felt like shouldn't just go on a list of what to do, but... You uh, to excellent, point. Point. excellent point. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. All, all these little action items might not be, be what we're just looking for. We need some philosophical guidance as well. Then the second one was, right now we don't have a, uh, right now we don't have a good one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's this one here? Diverse, Diverse economic base. How, what was the thought around that team? Who did that? There was talking about the sustainability plan and how look, not to become a, another ghost town, we need to diversify our economics and of how the city makes money. Okay. Any thoughts, comments over here on this parking lot? Uh, incorporating needs of children in open space planning. Um, also, seniors. RSVP. RSVP program students interge intergenerational. So, uh, so really that's something to consider as all of these practices and ideas get moved forward. Is that what you're saying? It's sort of an overarching theme? Well, this was specific to open space planning, but oh, okay. we didn't apply that. I think it should be applied to everything. Sorry? I think it should be applied to everything. What she said. Yeah. Applied to everything. Yeah. Yes. City Council public hearing request from citizens on landfill unclear. It's sort of a, a, a still a simmering issue, I think. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can you clarify that a little bit for those of us who are confused? If you care to. Um, that came from me. Um, recently, uh, a group of citizens, uh, well, a group of citizens went before the city council and asked for um, a, a public forum on the landfill issue or for some means to remedy the fact that the city councilors um, had limited communications with the public with regard to this issue, and it's unclear um, what the response is going to be to that. There was this general idea of, well, we're kind of already going to do that with the public hearings, but that's not really um, what the citizens who brought forth that request wanted addressed. They wanted the ability to Okay, one last comment on this. Just as I understand it, um, those conversations uh, can occur as soon as the research <coughs> is in. I mean, that's what I saw in the city council meeting anyway. There are these various uh, groups charged with researching the possibilities for what to do. Can we do it here? Can we send it to China? Can we, you know, what um, options there are and what potential hazards there are, um, et cetera, and that the conversation would be half-baked without the information. Okay, thank you. Can we wrap this up with one more comment? Well, I thank just you. wanted to say something as a member of the Best Practices Committee, just sure. a sort of a general comment, if that's okay. About this issue? Yeah, I didn't know whether any of us would get a chance to speak as members of the committee yes, before the end there, of the so. evening. I just want to say this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, organizing committee. Thank you, everyone who's here. This has generated wonderful stuff as far as I can see, and I hope my fellow committee members see it the same way. We have a lot to work with. Um, this is beyond dreams. Um, and I, I, I want to just put this out. I haven't talked to other members of the committee. One of the things that we've been talking about doing is a case study of one of these issues that may have been on the, on the white paper when it, you came in tonight or some other issue where we went from A to Z on a 
beginning of a project to the end. And um, if, if that's something you would like to see us do or have a particular project you think would be good for that kind of study, you should just let us know that. We're, it's something that we're deliberating about. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I, yeah, yes. Yeah, like any other members of the committee would like to comment? <coughs> well, one of the uh, uh, goals or objectives at the end of this meeting, or part of that, the result of this meeting in the best practices was to involve more people in the process. We really like to look in depth at a number of uh, issues around the city, all, all of the things that have been, a lot of things have been brought up tonight. We really don't have the resources. As a group of people, we really can't do that. We really need more people. And we're looking, I think, for some sort of way of incorporating uh, people who volunteer to join this group and do specific tasks and come you know, uh, eventually to the best practices and eventually to the city council with recommendations. Mm -hmm. OK. More res personnel resource. Yes, Linda. Um, David, also on the best practices committee. Uh, we have a website and we have a Google Groups, uh, uh, which you can go to our website, which is just northamptonma.gov slash best practices. You can join the Google Groups, which is sort of a, a listserv so that you can be part of the conversation, follow the information, submit suggestions and ideas online. Also, our next meeting is on Wednesday, uh, June 4th at 6 o'clock in Council Chambers. We're lonely. We want company. Um, and we're, we're also having the meetings on NCTV. So you know, we want to get people to come to those meetings and, and help be part of that conversation. Yeah, I just want to say, Jesus and I have been the two public June participants 4th. in those meetings. And, and that's all. And I'm tired Andrew. of being there. Mary, <laughs> so, so the next in meeting of the ad hoc uh, best practices is June Wednesday, 4th. June 4th. Wednesday, June 4th. And, Wednesday, June 4th. and, and I just want to reassure that it's 6 p.m. And now we're starting a regular scheduled meeting. So if you can't uh, make that, the first Wednesday and fourth Thursday of every month, we're going to be meeting. So you can find all of our minutes up on that website. And please, we encourage you, Wait, where grab is? one of us. Talk. If anybody's here from the Best Practices Committee, raise your hand. Come and talk to us personally. Come to a meeting. We want to hear from you. One more so time on the website address, www.northamptonma.gov/slash. I'll write it. We will be discussing at that next meeting this, this forum oh, and sorry. the information that we've gathered here. So we'd really like to help. Quick, so we have the time for the next uh, committee meeting. Uh, an evaluation form is passed out. Did everyone get one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Suggestions for the structuring the next meeting. I would like to give a round of applause for our best practices committee because yeah. that's really impressed. Yeah. Okay, we have food still back on the table. And if anyone wants to stay around and help us take down all of these uh, posters, we welcome your support on that. And I would like to give a round of applause to Jason.